There's been a lot of talk about suspension trauma. What is it? How does it happen? And what do you do if you encounter it? You have questions, we have answers, next. Take what you think you know about suspension trauma and set it aside. Today we're going to cover the topic from a new perspective. And when we're through, you'll walk away informed. Let's get started. I'm here with Brian Horner, an expert in remote medicine, rescue, and survival. Brian, let's talk about something people might not know. Calling it suspension trauma is a bit of a misnomer, right? Because it's not really about trauma at all. It doesn't seem to be about trauma. As I looked at it in the last three or four years, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing the trauma part of it. Let's look at what happens to a climber in suspension. When a person goes unconscious, the muscular contraction of the veins fail. And at that first failure, you're gonna drop 20% of your blood supply out of your head to your legs. You can survive that. But eventually, as it keeps on failing, the pumps eventually will have 60% of your blood supply fall into your lower torso. That's shock. And we all know what shock does to people. It will kill them in a very short time. That's serious stuff, Brian. So you're saying that the best thing you can do when you're suspended in your harness is to keep moving, right? When a person goes in suspension, okay, if they're not unconscious, sure, keeping moving will stop things like harness bite and maybe your legs going numb, right? But the issue is if they're conscious, I'm not quite sure if they'll ever go into suspension trauma if they're a healthy climber. Wow, so what are the signs that a climber is experiencing this? Actually, most people are familiar with the signs of shock because that's what this is, a blood flow problem. So their face is gonna go pale, they're gonna feel faint, they're gonna start sweating on the tower, and that's that blood leaving, and it's your body Body actually responding by trying to cool itself and if the climber notices that right then they can get into a suspension reduction position legs moving upwards moving their legs and those things but if they bypass that or another climber doesn't notice it in another climber and they go into the unconscious phase that's where everything changes and now rapid uh, interdiction rapid extrication would probably be the model so Brian, what do we do for the person in that situation? Well, it depends on if they're conscious or unconscious. You know, if they're conscious and they're starting to go through this fainting and feeling bad, you know, I'm gonna come up to the climber and I'm gonna say, hey Ryan, how you feeling, right? Do you wanna go down? And I'll help you down, okay? And that way I take the pressure off of him a little bit. If he says, I can't get down, you know, I'm too weak, then I'm gonna put you into a horizontal position and get another climber to help me. I'm gonna stall. But if that climber that I come up to is unconscious, I'm in trouble, and so are you. Okay, everything now has got to be expedited, whether it be an airway, whether it be extrication, whether it be lowering. In fact, this guy now is a cardiac patient. The best treatment for this worker is down there. So Brian, what do we do with the climber once we get them to the ground? If they're in shock, which is what we define this is, and blood is left ahead, there's not any medical field in the United States or Europe that doesn't say place patients flat on the ground first. Once we put them flat though, Ryan, we're gonna move them to a side position, what's called a recovery position. And if they have no trauma, put them on their left side. As a person is unconscious, their stomach will lean to the left side and you'll have less vomiting while they're unconscious. So flat first on their back, get them stable, roll left side, and then get help coming to your tower. A lot of this information is pretty different from what we've been taught growing up. How did you learn what you know? You know, I took my experience as a mountain climber and a crevasse rescue guy, and I started looking at when I started climbing towers, I didn't find it that much different. And I said, why in this industry are we doing things differently than other industries? And it's one of those carryovers. Because we started it and nothing really changed or, or defined it, we kept it. So I'm here to define it have a better understanding of it, use new research to support this understanding, and get our tower climbers to respond to it by having better techniques, better equipment, and actually better management support. Brian, thank you so much for all of your wisdom. And for you out there, this is incredibly important information that will help you in all of your rescue planning. Thanks for watching, and stay safe, my friends.